Anthony Grasso here, bringing you financial news you can use. In this video, I'm going to do a stock analysis on DraftKings. Should we bet the house on this one? Let's find out together because Papa needs, needs a new pair of shoes. I'm going to go over a summary of the company, of product offerings, recent headline news, financials, analyst projections, and give up my buy, hold, or sell recommendation for both the short-term and long-term growth investors out there. And as always, folks, don't forget to smash that like button down below and consider subscribing and hit the notification bell if you'd like to hear daily stock reviews and recommendations. Okay, so let's get right into it. So uh, DraftKings is a digital sports entertainment and gaming company. The company provides users with daily fantasy sports, sports betting, and iGaming opportunities. Its offerings include business-to-consumer offerings and business-to-business -business offerings as well. Its business-to-consumer products offerings include daily uh, fantasy sports, sports books, and iGaming. Daily fantasy sports is a peer-to-peer -peer platform in which its users compete against one another for prizes. Sports books include sports bettings, which uh, involves a user placing a bet or wagering money on an event at some fixed odds pro proposition determined by the company. Now, iGaming is an online casino, which includes a suite of games available in land-based casinos such as blackjack, roulette, and slot machines. It also supplies B2B, business-to-business uh, -business sports betting, and iGaming services for various gaming operators and government run lotteries now let's look at some headline news which uh took this took, took this to the moon the other day or uh, and today too so DraftKings signs an exclusive daily fantasy sports deal in canada ahead of sports betting legislation now DraftKings expanded an existing deal with the nfl thursday what happened was the national football league and DraftKings expanded an exclusive daily fantasy partnership to canada the existing deal signed uh, in September 2019 was limited to the United States as an exclusive deal between the two parties. Now, why this is important is because daily fantasy sports is growing in popularity. More importantly, this could give DraftKings a great entry into Canada and the ability to gain a strong user base of daily fantasy uh, sports users before sports betting is legalized in the country in the, in the coming up future. Now, DraftKings and FanDuel are among the leaders in the online sports betting market, and some of that success could come from their early entry into daily fantasy sports. If DraftKings can gain a large pool of daily fantasy uh, users in Canada, it could cross-promote its sports betting if Canada, uh, if Canada legalizes at some point in the future. So let's go ahead and look at some of the fundamentals of the company real quick. Uh, so... The DraftKings has a market capitalization currently of uh, $24.74 billion as of today with current share price of $63.87. Uh, Post-market, it actually went up to about $64. The company's projected revenues for 2020 should be around $548 million with a negative $765 million in earnings. That sounds pretty bad, but it's not really once you look into it a little bit more. Revenue grew by 47.9% over the past year. Revenue is forecast to grow by 31.29% per year. Now, the projected revenue by the end of 2025 should be about $2.81 billion with earnings of $64 million. So, yes, right now it currently looks bad, but... Over the next four years, it's just going to go up and up and up and up, and they're going to break profitability to break the 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 earnings of negative about twenty early twenty twenty five. I project, so it's definitely going to take years to be for them to become profitable. Now, looking at their uh, cash runway, uh, DraftKings has sufficient cash runway for more than three years based on its current free cash flow. They they basically debt free. And they have uh, had no debt for the past five years now. And the short-term assets of $1.5 billion exceeds its short-term and long-term liabilities. Now, even though it's going to take a few years for profitability, I will explain later on the macroeconomic, social, and mostly political forces at play that will affect this company in the long term. But I do have to note, though, there has been a lot of insider selling on the company over the past six months, which, you know, typically if you see a lot of selling, you kind of get worried there. But I think they might be just taking profits because it did just go public uh, this uh, last year. Uh, so let's uh, let's. So what did the analysts say? I'm going to bring it back here. Now the analysts out there, it is uh, considered a moderate buy. The average stock price target is is sixty one dollars and sixty three cents over the next twelve months, with a high estimate of a hundred dollars and a low estimate of forty one, and is currently trading a little bit above the median right now. And I couldn't find any real analyst reports out there that are actually reporting on this company. I did find a new constructs report, and that's a robo analysis. But they said 
that they recommend investors avoid DraftKings and say it has an unattractive rating and has more downside risk than upside potential. But yeah, I mean, just looking at it today and saying, okay, the financials of the day, if it doesn't have any forward looking projection of what it's going to be doing two, three years from now, yeah, it'd be a horrible buy. So am I a buy, hold, or sell recommendation on DraftKings right now? Here are my thoughts. Online gambling DraftKings is winning big on its focus on sports bettors. Traditional casino stocks like MGM Resorts are expanding into online sports betting and online casino gambling because those traditional brick and mortar casinos know that they need to reimagine this sector of the entertainment industry if they're going to survive the long term in this industry. To examine DraftKings, we need to have forward looking goggles on, not just those beer goggles in front of the slot machines drinking our, uh, our, our hard earned money away, right? So rising smartphone adoption, internet infrastructure improvement, and easy access to gaming platforms are driving online betting through the roof. The pandemic and rise of millennials are accelerating the trend as well. Now, more pro uh, sports teams have gotten directly involved with companies like DraftKings. More states are lifting legal restrictions on online gambling. Now, here's a statistic. 50 million more Americans in 2021 can bet on sports than in 2020. According to PlayUSA.com, a news research and analyst site covering online gambling, industry reports show that more than $20 billion have been bet on sports since the Supreme Court allowed states to legalize sports wagering in 2018. More than 80% of sports bets are online. By 2027, the online gambling market is slated to reach $127 billion, according to the Grand View Research. Now, U.S. is becoming an increasingly lush ground for online gambling. Voters in several states, including Maryland and Louisiana, approved measures in November to legalize sports wagering. Now 20 states and Washington, D.C. allow it, with New York on the verge of legalizing it, too. I believe that legalization will spread to more states in the, in the upcoming years. That's, that's my forward-looking projection and goggles. And I believe that DraftKings appears ready to take off after an outbreak of partnership deals that they have just signed, which I believe will be a big boost to DraftKings stock in the future. I believe that more states will keep opening up online gambling to companies like DraftKings in the future. With now smartphones taking over the world with more people being able to be betting on their phones the same way millions of people are betting on stocks with Robinhood guys, like what we're doing right now. Therefore, I'm a long-term bull on this stock, but buy in at the right time. There is a lot of volatility in this stock right now, so you might want to wait to buy in at the next dip. Look for profit taken and buy into the stock between the $50 and $60 a share share price. I would target about $80 per share over the next 12 months. Short-term day, short day traders out there, I believe this one would be the one that you should have on your watch list so you make money on the volatility swings. So there you have it, folks. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button down below and consider subscribing and hit that notification bell if you like to hear daily stock reviews and recommendations. Until the next stock update later today or tomorrow morning, ciao.